commence bien. Ok, really starts in a really. Oh, good. Ta-da. So, thank you very much, Frederic. Um, ok, it's. Um, uh, my task is just to introduce uh, this uh, uh, presentation, uh, which will be mainly uh, delivered by Fred Payet, who is a sociologist at the Ecole des Studies in Sciences Sociales in Paris, and uh, also a doctoral candidate at the University of Nantes, and we've been working together with uh, Paola and other researchers uh, to um, a project started in 2010 uh, dealing with uh, Anamia uh, online networks. Now, I will go into that uh, after uh, one quick presentation of the uh, title of the project. It's called Anamia Sociability and Online Offline Social Networks Approach to Eating Disorders. Uh, basically, this project deals with the website and website users who are affected by eating disorders, anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa, eating disorder not otherwise specified, and who are, uh, well, interacting online. This uh, is actually a very lively community uh, that has been somehow at the center of a lot of media attention, probably not the good one, because uh, it has been stigmatized as pro-ana, pro-anorexic um, community, online community. Um, to tell the truth, at the beginning we were uh, sure we would tap into this kind of uh, uh, online community and that we were uh, going to study um, a deviant subculture. What turned out was a slightly different um, picture, well, a very different pictures, picture to tell you the truth. Um, we found uh, an, a number, an, a really remarkable number of uh, uh, young and less young uh, uh, women and men, uh, well, basically uh, witnessing their life stories, uh, telling what they do in their everyday life, and of course, also exchanging some contents that to the general public are considered as disturbing. Because documenting your life when your life is dominated by anorexia nervosa and bulimia and other uh, kind of disorders is, can be extremely graphic and can be somehow offending to people who are not pathological eaters, let's say. Uh, this is the, well, the definition that is going elsewhere. Uh, given elsewhere. Uh, so if you start telling uh, online uh, what do you do in your everyday life, it also involves, you know, describing how you vomit or are you starved or how do you consider yourself to be beautiful when you weigh like uh, uh, 37 kilograms. And of course this is not something that uh, it's easy to, let's say, deliver to the general public. Uh, another important part of the life in a, an anorexic <coughs> bulimic community online is the exchange of inspirational photos, pictures and photographs. Somehow, some, sometimes there are pictures that are taken from uh, uh, magazines, Somehow, sometimes there are pictures that are actually amateur pictures of uh, the, the actual users. And they are uh, supposedly uh, going to inspire others. Um, somehow they are like cautionary tales, don't go in that direction. Sometimes they are actually, uh, well, considered like canons of beauty. So the picture is actually more complex than the simple pro-anorexic discourse, media discourse, uh, was somehow announcing. We are dealing with people that sometimes also uh, provide help to others and sometimes also provide tools for empowerment. Tools for yeah, taking your life back into your, li into your hands and, uh, well, in some cases also go see a doctor, uh, join a community, join a, a, I mean a health care oriented community. In this case, uh, we are looking at those uh, uh, users uh, in the general frame of uh, medical apomediation, which is a term that has been used in the uh, last few years to describe the way nowadays web users are dealing with medical authority. If back, I don't know, uh, in the pre-web times, uh, patients 
uh, went to see their doctors with a set of symptoms. Nowadays, they go see their doctors with a set of symptoms and probably a draft of diagnosis uh, done probably with Wikipedia, sometimes, you know, found online. So it is important to know what do they really say on those blogs, eating related blogs, because we have to actually question the very notion of pro ana of meaning pro-anorexia or making an apology on anorexia. Probably they are just providing documentation for people who already have those uh, kind of uh, uh, disorders. Now, the problem is, of course, the problem uh, with censorship. Paula uh, has presented, let's say, one part of our, our research that deals with censorship. This is another part, actually, because those online communities have been censored, have been banned, filtered, have been excluded from, uh, well, uh, in some cases, uh, uh, social platforms, or they've been uh, concealed uh, by uh, uh, popular search engines such as Yahoo at the time, we're talking about, you know, back in 2001, or Google more recently. So the standard webometric approach which basically means let's search for those terms and see what we bump into does not work anymore. We are dealing with just-in-time sociology in this case because it's, uh, you know, it's, let's, let's make sociology before it's too late. Uh, it's just before data disappear. And this has been something that we've been uh, discussing today, so I won't go into that. Just a quick uh, slide before I uh, yield the floor to uh, Fred. Uh, I just wanted to uh, introduce the way we've been dealing with this community, how we have studied it, not by plugging ourselves on the uh, Twitter API and uh, uh, massively uh, and passively uh, uh, you know, retrieving data, uh, but uh, we've been using a different, more subjective and ethnographically informed approach and a tool uh, that is Navicrawler, has been developed by uh, well, in some cases, colleagues uh, uh, that were working with the uh, uh, eDiaspora project uh, and uh, we're working actually on, on migration and so Marta and Tommaso have, you know, some proximities, let's say, with this. Navi Crawler is actually a Firefox extension that uh, tracks uh, the way you explore the web. So you is, well, a researcher that somehow has uh, an ethnographic approach to the web finds uh, subjectively uh, entry points in uh, this uh, blog sphere or a, a website sphere in general and then crawls, you know, goes deeper into this uh, dense jungle of, uh, of links. And Navi Crawler, what, what the, the tool does, is basically record every link in every path uh, of the navigation Exactly, in a, in a list that is uh, uh, easily usable to do standard social network analysis because it also records all the links between the, the websites. So, I won't go further into that because I suppose that many of you are familiar with the tool. I will simply uh, leave uh, Fred go on and just present you with the French uh, web uh, sphere of the Anania community in 2010 and 2012. Um, uh, this is the French Anamia Webosphere in 2010 and 2012. Node size represents the number of incoming and outgoing links in three categories, small, medium and large. Colors represents betweenness centrality also in three categories, red equal low, purple equal medium and blue for high. As you can see, they display a comparable structure. Both networks have a major top component and a less sizable bottom one, which roughly correspond to different popular blog platforms. These components are connected by a few bridging links. As we can see in this next slide, pressure to ban an AMIA website is not effective between 2010 and 2012. Same structure, same size. The network structure and size is consistent over time. 559 sites in 2010 and 593 sites in uh, 2012. 
Both networks have sizable clicks, low global density and high local density. Hubs, websites that are directing to many other sites, even if they don't reciprocate, are mostly repositories, which is to say websites offering non-personal contents, medical information, tips for starving and purging, and browsing resources like the blog rolls we had browsed to collect the data. We must add here that sites never hide their main interest for eating disorders. They display explicit pro-eating disorders pseudonyms and don't make no effort to cancel risky or proscribed keywords. But some other metrics and networks feature indicate that the network is not safe from censorship. We can understand how it is affected by studying a particular type of sites, those which have survived between 2010 and 2012. On this slide, while network characteristics seem to be really stable, in the same time, the turnover is about 50%. Only 296 websites have survived from 2010. Most of them are located in the upper click. It lets us imagine that resilience involves more sophisticated strategies than just hiding. We can see on the picture that most of the new sites, blue ones, are not easily absorbed by the existing network. Clustering coefficient is higher for surviving nodes. It means that the long-lasting sites are embedded in local that become almost impenetrable and they are often circled around repositories websites scoring with high betweenness centrality. How the graph evolves. If the network's density is relatively even from one year to another, we may observe that the diameter of the graph has become consistently bigger. It means that some sites are pushed to the borders, to the sides of the network and won't be able to connect with other websites easily. Then, we can see that even if each metric is decreasing for all websites, long-lasting sites still have higher average scores. Average betweenness centrality tells us that hubs and repository websites are still brokers, but clustering coefficient indicates that they play this role only locally and more and more locally. So, we have a double dynamic. The networks seem to stay quiet and stable over the years, but, in fact, the, densi the density is unevenly distributed through the network. Hubs are embedded in even denser clusters and they are bonding locally. So basically this means uh, uh, that uh, uh, hubs remain uh, brokers, but they are uh, brokers only locally which basically means that this graph, although it looks like the same in terms of size, in terms of structure, has undergone a certain transformation in terms of renewal of the website and in terms of loss of connected, connectedness. Uh, and in terms of the way the information is bridged from one component to the other. So uh, let us go quickly to the conclusions and see uh, how and why, uh, first of all, this results cast serious doubts on the effectiveness on bans, of bans of censorship of Anamia online contents. Well, uh, the, the censorship does not work, first of all, because uh, uh, the network reshapes itself in order to uh, get around uh, pro repression and, and, and ban in general, and the, the, the uh, ED-related communities become more suspicious, more entrenched, more inward-oriented. Uh, if we look at, for instance, let's go back to, the, uh, to the, this image, we see that this component has become more and more, has become more, and more dense, uh, which also means uh, that we're looking at densely neat anemia clicks, bonding and information redundancy become prevalent, uh, and bridging becomes uh, more, uh, less, oh, sorry, um, uh, less present. This uh, means that hubs survive from one year to the other by hiding beneath interwoven ephemeral blocks. 
that uh, are uh, uh, there just to provide some kind of periphery, protective periphery, protective shield um, against external intrusions. Uh, these intrusions may come from people who are not uh, affiliated, let's say, to the enemy community, uh, or bots uh, coming from uh, uh, web searching web search engines. Um, less well positioned uh, as brokers, the hubs are less well positioned as brokers who can retransmit the message to a large audience, which is a bad news for also for those who want to target those communities to deliver a health related message. If you are a doctor, if you are, a, uh, I don't know, a healthcare professional who wants to get in touch, who wants to reach out to those communities, back in 2010 you could still hope that targeting the middle of the graph and uh, hoping for some bridging effect would work, because bridging was more present at the time, in 2012, bad news, this graph is less uh, uh, connected on average and more dense and on the locally, which means that if you have to deliver a message, you have to go, you have to go here, cut through this dense uh, uh, jungle of interwoven links, and uh, which basically leads us to the uh, final conclusion. Uh, censorship not only is not effective in the sense that censors uh, want to uh, want to have. Uh, but it also has some kind of negative effects because <clears throat> transforms these communities in more entrenched and more suspicious ones, which is actually the really bad news for censors, basically. And this is the part where we say thank you, and also sorry for the little confusion, and we are open now to questions, hopefully. Questions? Okay. I have a question, one methodological. Mm -hmm. um, the second corpus, how did you build that you start from the first corpus and then you have exactly. to decide everything? Exactly. Yes. Um, so you don't think the stability you found can also be, be led to it. Yeah, it, it's, it is actually uh, a yeah. bias that we are aware of. And the other, the other possibility is starting from scratch with the same search protocol which basically might lead to nothing, because in 2012 uh, the, the um, uh, web uh, filtering uh, in terms of search was so high uh, that uh, it really, I mean, nowadays if you look for something, some pro-ana related uh, um, keyword in, uh, in Google, you have very good chances of uh, bumping into anti-pro-ana websites. Yeah. So, yeah. I have a similar problem in other study sure. that um, the problem is you not know, the stability of the links you know, mm -hmm. in general. Like uh, it's very difficult that one person decide to delete a link on my website. So, for example, when I study censorship on the uh, Egyptian sure. network uh, during Arab Spring, I had the problem. I knew that several links was broken, so, uh, but. Uh, the same people mobilizing for uh, the Arab Spring were people mobilizing for uh, human rights Sharia uh, before. So I was wondering if you had a solution to avoid this problem because I couldn't. No. <laughs> and I'm aware of the problem you had with the, with the and, and also the solution that you came up with for, for the Egyptian uh, study. Uh, but in this case, basically, is Let's go back to the, to the corpus, let's see which one are still there, let's see starting from there and using Navicrawler, where, what other uh, websites can we reach? And so basically that was the solution that we used. And again, uh, this stability, just to go back to the graph that we showed, the stability is only apparent. We see networks that have the same size, more or less the same structure, and yet if we look uh, at the turnover, we discover that the picture is slightly different, that this, this, uh, uh, network, has, this network has, and has been undergoing uh, a, a transformation and a renewal, which is what, what the part that is interesting to us. Yes? I can add a little thing to what um, Antonius just said. Um, I Another thing with these populations that sometimes they just move from one block to another, mm -hmm. 
but that doesn't mean they discontinue the old one. It stays there, and maybe it still continues to get comments uh, to remain, I mean, active by others, if not by the author. And the author has migrated to elsewhere. So we have some measures of that, but um, uh, that suggests it's quite expensive. It's not a complete solution. Mm -hmm. not Tommaso? Yeah, also two questions. The first one, uh, can you describe the three clusters that we see in the, in the graphs? Paolo, Fred, so would you like to describe the clusters? <laughs> the clusters, uh, let's go back here. What? Yeah. Uh, uh, what? When you say three, say this one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, in fact, there's two, 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 two clusters. Uh, uh, Something I've forgotten to say uh, before. Uh, I guess uh, the clusters are uh, related to a uh, block platform. Uh, this one is, a, is the bigger block platform in, in France. It's very few do not say that yeah, for, for, for a CNIL reason. And this one is a big one, but not in France. Uh, uh, and uh, this part uh, is a totally new part uh, that. Uh, that is not uh, uh, fl flowing out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's not spinning off. That, <laughs> that is uh, spinning in mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, with the, the, the rest of the graph, uh, the other part. Yeah. Uh, but uh, in this part, a, uh, a lot of, uh, of sites have, have moved from uh, uh, this state uh, in 2010. And uh, in the upper Peak, you, you, can, uh, you can't you can see it, but in fact there is uh, four different uh, blog platforms. Uh, so uh, uh, with blogs that uh, that are really connected, uh, but uh, there's a, a main one, which is about uh, uh, ninety percent, I guess, and uh, the three little ones uh, are. Um, Dispatched uh, in in uh, in the components. Uh, so, so what you say is is that there's a real big effect of the, of the block platform as united. I mean, yes. this I mean, we, we live in the web where everything is quotable. You can quote everything from anything. But despite that, uh, 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 among a uh, given block platform, there's really much more interlinked. Yes. That's, I mean, that's and not obvious to me, and so it's it, interesting it, that you find yes. that. Is it a platform or is it the nationality of the platform? Because I said they are both French and the one is... No, no, they're both French. They're both French. They're both French <laughs> and uh, uh, French speaking uh, and mainly French in terms of, uh, yes. of the, the way that they are. Uh, because uh, if you look at other uh, French speaking uh, communities, uh, well, usually, the, for instance, the Canadian one, uh, even the French uh, Canadian tend to uh, interact with the English speaking uh, uh, on English speaking platforms so it's not it's basically French we actually bumped into a couple of uh, uh, Swiss Belgian and Algerian bloggers uh, that, but they were really a uh, small small minority I think three yeah on, on uh, over over 300 people that uh, uh, we, we uh, administered questionnaires to yeah to. Uh, uh, about the uh, platform uh, platform effect, uh, uh, we have tagged uh, the websites uh, in a, in the third part, uh, 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 and uh, we have uh, tried to, um, uh, to to tag the the, uh, the tools that the platform are uh, offering to to bloggers and uh, oh. No. In fact, we have tried to, uh, to tag uh, the, all the sites depending uh, tools uh, that we were uh, hoping to find everywhere in the graph. Uh, the, uh, the forums, uh, the disclaimers, uh, that they are uh, warning it's uh, uh, pro ana content, or this is not pro ana, even if uh, the content are uh, pro eating disorders after. Um, and, uh, and in fact, uh, the, all the forums are in the lower part, 
uh, all the disclaimers are in the upper part, and uh, we thought uh, it would be some different tool with different uh, uh, power to, to offer to the user, and uh, we have now to, to think them as a, a whole thing, uh, discriminating the contents, whatever the, con uh, the tool is. I think, yeah. that, I think that there was another question before you. Yeah. No, then. no, no, apparently yeah. not. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it could be very useful to know uh, something about the, the subjects uh, sure. who are interconnection uh, between these uh, networks. Uh, this is the one question. Uh, what do you know about them? And the second one, I think uh, it could be very useful to organize or to, to support some uh, scientific uh, discussion uh, about some models which is repeated in some other uh, topics, in some other uh, situation. Because of, uh, as, as I understood you, these people are um, very much uh, interested in pro-ana movement. Mm -hmm. It means they are supporters they are uh, engaged in that, uh, they, they, uh, this is much uh, stronger for them, this movement, than, than the life or something like that. Uh, and this very similar uh, characteristics we can find sometimes in other networks, some fighters. Uh, against totality or something like okay, that. Okay, yeah, this is... Or, or this, uh, these people <laughs> also is uh, it's stronger than, than the life or some. And I don't uh, like to work for, for CIA or something like that, <laughs> but uh, uh, this is top secret what, what the, the, their findings. Yeah? We cannot use them and we don't like to, to give the, uh, our uh, knowledge to, to some uh, fighters <coughs> against... Uh, mm, but... Uh, uh, what are the possibilities uh, to share these uh, this uh, these yeah. um, uh, findings? Mm. Okay, just to, uh, I of course this was not the uh, the, the, the actual uh, topic of this presentation, but the overall project also includes hundreds of questionnaires administered to those uh, mm -hmm. users and also dozens of interviews with uh, you know, uh, in-depth interviews, uh, hour-long uh, interviews with uh, users from France and the UK. So we have a, a really um, unique insight into these communities. Uh, nobody ever tried this. Nobody ever uh, actually uh, succeeded. So this is just the tip of the iceberg of what you see. This is just the you know, web uh, cartography part of, of, of the overall study which actually, you know, tells us a lot about this community. And the first things that it tells us is that uh, we probably we can probably we cannot uh, envision uh, the anemia, uh, so an anorexia and bulimia uh, related uh, websites as a movement. This is probably the first and more important result. Uh, at the beginning, we thought so, and we were expecting that. Uh, we think that the you know uh, proximity in terms of kind of experience is not with uh, uh, dissident uh, blogs, but more with the uh, um, patients' communities online. People who have cancer, people who look for self-help. I don't know after a major traumatism, but uh, not uh, with uh, you know networks of fighters or political activists. This is not exactly the kind of uh, insight that we get from the interviews. And although their discourse and their rhetoric is extremely strong, the reality of their web use is more complex and more sophisticated, and they are probably uh, also less naive uh, than they uh, sometimes uh, seem, to, seem to be when they write you know, more expressive things or when they want to be perfect, or when they want to uh, find the perfect body, or want to be like the movie stars. If you actually interview them, they, the picture is really more complex than these. They, they are aware of the kind of condition they're in. They are aware of the fact that somehow, eventually, they will have to uh, deal with medical authorities. And they are somehow dealing with that, trying to negotiate a diagnosis, trying to negotiate 
the kind of service, the, the healthcare service they are, they're going to be um, uh, using uh, eventually in the future. I think my previous chairman yeah. to, to ask you the last one. Yes, actually. <laughs> Oops, I am ready. No, that's fine. That's okay. fine. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a general question. Actually, there was a, a recent case of uh, the, the, the the book publishers uh, that decided to sue or to attack mm -hmm. uh, um, a website that was doing uh, ebook piracy. Yeah. And there was an article by Hubert Guillot really? who actually I analyzed <laughs> analyzed uh, this. I mean, this this event and was very critical about. These people try to, to censor, well, censor yeah. or to attack, etc. And they quote your work yeah. uh, in saying that uh, your work was representative of what was happening when you have a given structure and, and you try to attack a given site, which is well established and, and clearly identifiable, and saying that what the result you had showed this reconfiguration where it's in some way a bit like a living organism strengthened uh, itself. Mm -hmm. uh, do you feel comfortable? Uh, do you think? It's, do you think you have something? Uh, I have mixed feelings about uh, that. But anyway, I mean, yeah. uh, Hubert Guillaume is uh, is a, uh, a journalist and an intellectual that uh, we all appreciate. I think in the in the, in the uh, uh, project uh, and uh, uh, his website accepted to publish some pre-print of this article. And uh, of course, there was there is a political use of that. But uh, we are aware and uh, we are also sympathetic with this political use in terms of fighting censorship. Uh, I think that uh, given what Paula presented today, given what we just presented here, it is also clear the kind of orientation. So if, even though the argument was not completely, um, I mean, not completely developed yet, we, I think we feel comfortable with the political orientation. Yes, hopefully it's all right. Okay. okay. <laughs>